So, um, Andrew, why don't you first start with some of your takeaways, some of your aha moments? There's so much stuff I wrote down. Um, I, think, I have so many notes. <laughs> I think really just about the repurposing your tweets, like how how really how huge that is. You know, not really thinking um, how significant that can be to getting your message out to more people when you're not trying to, you know. Um, show off or try to, mm -hmm. to do things to make you say, look at me, look at me, like we said earlier, but you're really just getting the message out because maybe a lot of people missed it. They didn't see it depending on when you put it out to begin with. So I really think that's, that was super important. Something I really took away from that, you know, and then we can't, we, we just can't, um, with storytelling, how significant and important it truly is when you're trying to get your message out there. If you're authentic, you're real, more people are going to gravitate and buy into what you're doing because they can feel it. We always say you're not always going to remember what you were taught, but you're definitely going to remember how someone made you feel, right? And, and the way people make us feel, that tends to last with us a whole lot longer than something we heard as far as a stat or, or a fact. So, I mean, those two things right there, there's so many others, but, you know, I want to give you a chance to talk about some of the things that you, uh, that were your aha moments. But for me, those two things stand out. I'm going to go last this time. So Keith, why don't you go next? Sure. Um, you know, to be honest with you, there was, there, there really was a ton of stuff in there and, and, and going into this podcast, um, only knowing guy for a couple of weeks, it was like, okay, you know, it, just the, the stuff that we ask, the stuff that we were able to come up with. I mean, I've just got so much stuff coming out of my ears from what he told me. And I, I have to go back and listen to this to get a lot of it. But again, I'm going to go kind of with what Andrew said is retweeting yourself. And the reason I'm going to say that that's one of my biggest takeaways is I would never think to retweet myself because I think that would make me look like a major tool. And you know how I feel about, you know, me looking like a tool. I do it well enough without having to retweet myself. So I won't do that. But, you know, you do think about social media and the fact that you do see only the, the, the most recent stuff. And if, if somebody went on at, at nine o'clock and you posted at, you know, nine thirty when they were off of it, and then they come back on at two, that nine thirty post is is way down their feed and they might not get that far. Right. You know, and one of the things that he even brings up is using small clips, mm -hmm. you know, of, of digital media because he he said that in, even in the Zag class when we did that little. Um, uh, thing where he said, okay, go on Twitter and scroll up. And then when you see one that breaks your eye, stop on that and then see how many tweets you looked past. And it's true. I mean, I think the first one I looked at was one where somebody was talking, somebody that I knew was talking, that it wasn't a video of something else, but it was somebody talking. And then again, I, the question was, well, how many ads were in between where I started in that one? And there was at least 10 or 15 ads. And I was only about 40 tweets in before I actually stopped. So it is creating content that makes people stop. That's important. Yeah. So for the, our listeners, and if you're watching, that lesson that he did where we all pulled out our cell phones and he did say, go on Twitter. And then he goes, go through, you know, first go, you know, to the top of your page and then just scroll down and see where you stop. A lot of people had like, well, I didn't stop until like the 15th post or the 20th post. And then he goes, well, why did you stop? Because there was video content. Yep. There was an image or video content. That was so powerful. That was a good lesson. I mean, I think about like other than, you know, video content, the other times that I stop and this goes back to something that he said again, is if somebody puts out content you trust and I'll tell you first and foremost, I stop at every single thing that John Rady puts out. Right. Because I'm so, you know, interested in what did he find about brain research and movement now that I can forward it on because this is a reliable source, especially after seeing him speak and reading his book. Right. And that's where people are going to stop to on their sources that they feel very credible and that is their niche and their passion. Right. My takeaway was really about aligning your career why with your strategy for digital marketing, where the very big mistake that you're going to make right off the gate 
if you're going to use digital marketing is if you don't know your career why. You've got to be so laser focused on your career why and making sure that you are providing content that is relevant to your career why and to your audience. I've heard guys say before, now he did not do this in the podcast, but he has said content is king. If you have valuable content, people are going to most likely read it, retweet it, repurpose it, however, but content is king. And so knowing your career why, aligning your career why with your marketing strategy, producing meaningful content, and then the last aha is really know your analytics. I'll be honest with you, I didn't want to know the analytics in the beginning, <laughs> I really didn't. I wanted to just put out this podcast and put out some content, but I truly had to look at the analytics. We did, the three of us did, and we realized we needed to break up this podcast into smaller segments. It's not that we changed much to the podcast, but we are breaking it into smaller segments because like right now, this podcast is about a minute or excuse me, an hour and 50 minutes. Nobody is going to watch an entire hour and 50 minutes of this podcast on YouTube or listen to the podcast unless they're going for a walk or run or they have a long drive in the car. They're more likely going to listen and view if it's broken into slices. Sure. So putting into bite-sized slices, this podcast, I think we're going to have about nine or 10, maybe even more than 10 mini sessions on our YouTube channel. So we've done four episodes all together. And now I'm going to go back and slice the podcast up with Principal Deneen, with Chip Candy. We did it with Kurt Hinson in episode three. And episode three had seven sessions. This one might be seven, eight, nine, ten. We're going to expand our video content on YouTube by probably, you know, 20 some sessions instead of just having four. Right. That's so powerful. It is. Yeah, the people, they don't have the time to spend hours to watch something. They want it in short segments, something that's going to grab their attention quickly, just like the videos, just like that's why TikTok's so important or so valuable. And all these things because they're quick videos that people get the message right away. Boom, move to the next one, move to the next one, move to the next one. You know, our attention spans. We know as a society, especially especially our kids, has gotten shorter and shorter and shorter. So we have to relay our message to the times and what people want. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what, what people want. And what people want are short, quick, concise, accurate, you know, content that's going to get to the point and they can move on. Mm -hmm. That's good. You know, right? Especially absolutely. Yeah, it has to be good. I, I, I get it. Yes, absolutely. It's got to be good. The content is good in podcast form. You'll listen to it in the car and drive and not think about it because, you know, like I've shared with you guys before, I've listened to uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson talk for three hours in a three hour drive. It was so interesting that I, I didn't want to turn it off for music. And, uh, you know, even the Elon Musk one that I'm listening to now, it's so interesting. I don't want to shut it off. Sure. But I'm not watching them. That's I'm correct. Listening to them and I'm only listening to them when I'm doing something that I want to listen to something and not watch something. And that's why we've kept our podcast to right. be a listening podcast sure. where people can start and stop, get out of the car, <laughs> stop their, you know, whatever they're listening to when they go for a walk or run and yep. come back to it. But on YouTube, you definitely have to slice it up. Sure. So, all right. Speaking of slicing it up, it's time for me to edit this, but I am all out of pizza. Last bite. I just finished so my last Our Thanks. next episode, though, is going to be um, – our past Shape America president, Jamie Sparks, and he's going to talk about what he does for uh, Shape America and for Kentucky Shape and a little bit more about Speak Out Day, you guys. So awesome. All right. Well, this is a podcast about PE. I mean, we're going to be allowed to talk to him about bourbon. Well, he is from Kentucky. I think that is going to be a um, subject that he will not not be able to talk about. He no. always brings it into his training sessions, always. So, um, but to our viewers and our listeners, we can't thank you enough for retweeting us, being um, influencing and trying to lift off this Pizza and PE podcast. You guys know who you are. We really appreciate all of you. And so we're gonna continue putting out these podcasts, putting out content. Um, Keith, Andrew, and myself, of course, we work together in a large urban school district. 
we don't take ourselves seriously, but we take our work seriously. So thank you, thank you, thank you, and slice you later. Ciao.